Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggles, stories, and triumphant successes of business owners across the land. Past episodes of the Authentic Business Adventures program can be found in the podcast link at drawincustomers.com. We are locally underwritten by the Bank of Sun Prairie. My name is James Kademan, entrepreneur, author, speaker, and helpful coach to small business owners across the country. Today, we're welcoming slash preparing to learn from Yakov Smart, the founder of Connect and Profit. Yakov, how are you doing today? Hey, really good to be here, James. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm excited. So why don't we start with just laying the foundation here. What is Connect and Profit? Yeah, Connect and Profit is a way for entrepreneurs to get clients coming to them through developing connected relationships. So no matter right. what someone's business is, there's people out there who have access to your ideal clients, your ideal audiences, your ideal followings. And Connect and Profit is the system for connecting with those connectors and creating those profitable relationships. All right. So how did this come about? So this came about actually in my former business. So when I started up in business, I was showing business owners how to use LinkedIn to generate leads and get clients. And I did that for a while. And while building that business in what I was doing to get clients and put myself out there, you know, I inadvertently came up with a process for identifying connectors, building value and creating those relationships. And before I knew it, you know, I was able to generate a little over $350,000 in direct revenue just from these types of relationships. So, you know, I had a conversation actually with my girlfriend who's also an entrepreneur and she pretty much told me, she's like, Hey, what you have this cool way of getting clients and growing your business. Other people would probably really want to know. And I said, yeah, you know, I'm ready to make that shift and share that with other business owners. And that's how connect and profit came to be. Nice. So what was your other business? It was, so, and the other business is still going. I think okay. they're, they kind of go together, Linked Lead Enterprises. So that's the official name of the business and it's all under the same umbrella. And mm -hmm. that's specifically focused on LinkedIn lead generation. Gotcha. So you, I mean, my rule in business is systematize everything or at least as much as you can. Right. A lot of times people believe that you can't systematize everything, but I would counter that. Pretty strongly. <laughs> um, so can you tell me how did you come up with the system? Was it just thinking, just looking at what was done and figuring out, hey, let's just build a spreadsheet or does it get more elaborate than that? Yeah. So, I mean, like any good system, I first created it by accident. You know, I, it made sense to me conceptually that, hey, you know, there's other people who have clients, other people have audiences, followings, you know, I, don't I at the time didn't have the resources to do a whole bunch of advertising or marketing mm -hmm. a one man shop. So, um, you know, some of the relationships came organically with people I'd meet at events or through mastermind groups, and it always seemed to work out really well. And then the first time I had an intern, I systematized it. I said, Hey, I bet you, you know, we could scale this up and ramp this up a little. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, it worked. And, you know, throughout the years, we've kind of refined the system and to really, you know, go to systematizing it. I wanted to put it in a way where it can apply to just about any business anywhere, whether they already have a large presence in the market, no matter what product or service they're offering. And I think, you know, with Connect and Profit, it's something that, you know, it's like a Swiss army knife. You can take sure. it and mold it for any type of business, any type of market. And especially if a business owner is listening and they want to find affluent clients or, you know, high paying, call them A-list type of clients. That's where mm -hmm. it's especially relevant because traditional marketing or, you know, running something like a Facebook ad, it's, a lot more saturated, a lot more noisy. And what the great thing about Connect and Profit, you've got the trust carried over from, you know, the other connector that goes directly to you. In today's day and age, you know, people tend to be more skeptical than ever. So right. bridging that trust gap is huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I was chatting with other guests before about the, the value that random people will put on reviews when they don't necessarily know where the reviews came from or even if they're right. legit or not. But once they get the referral from a friend, they'll still check out the reviews <laughs> from people that they don't even know. Just kind of. Yeah. It's, it's validation. World. You know, I think yeah. people are, a lot of people have been burned before. A lot of people have made bad decisions and had buyer's remorse. So mm -hmm. 
you know, they've sworn at to repeat those mistakes. And, you know, we live in a world that's very interwoven of social media and collectively, you know, getting people's feedback. So, I mean, it varies on the product or service. It varies on the person, but you're absolutely right. I mean, I'm not going to buy a book on Amazon, even even though it's a $20 book. I mean, the risk is technically very small, but I'm not going to buy a book if I see a bunch of crappy reviews or if I don't see any reviews at all, I'll say, wait a minute, you know, I'll at least second guess that decision. Yeah, I suppose twenty dollars in a few hours of your time, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Versus, you know, like for example, we have clients who are raising millions of dollars and someone's writing a check for five hundred thousand. That's a different, whole different level of decisions. Right. So but but right. the, the prince of the psychology is is weirdly similar. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. So do you, I guess, is the idea that a business owner will come to you and then you help them systematize or you essentially teach them how to do this? Or is this something where you do it for them? I, I like to say that we do it with them. I like to, because each business is a little different. So it's identifying, you know, there's three key systems that are part of connect and profit. The first one is hooking connector attention. Okay. And, you know, before that, the kind of the prequel is having the vision and identifying who your connectors are. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will make the mistake of identifying too many connectors and going too broad and, you know, just wasting time and energy. And some people will go too narrow or not really think outside the box. So, you know, there's a lot of different angles and avenues um, that they need to be able to identify. But hooking their attention is all about standing out and how do you reach that connector and get them interested in a potential collaboration or joint venture, or, you know, simply featuring you in front of their audience. There's a lot to that as well. And, you know, it's all about giving value and what's in it for them. So every strategy is a little different there. All right. The first system within a system. The next one is um, getting those connectors to say yes, right? So usually there's a conversation, usually there's a deal that's structured. So structuring that, how to deliver value. You know, a lot of people will say, well, in my industry, I can't do referral commissions, right? I'm an attorney, you know, it's, it's illegal. And that's great, you know, giving value, paying someone money is one way of giving value. Usually there's other things, other psychological things, boxes that need to be checked. And so it's identifying those and creating the strategy. And the third piece, and a lot of people go wrong too, is having a turnkey system for turning those streams of new leads into actual paying clients, right? And it's having an automated, I talk about a conversion mechanism that, you know, someone can send you a lead or a potential client and you're educating them and you're inspiring action. And that's where a lot of the automation comes into play. So it's a unique three-part kind of system that can apply to any business. And what's really cool about it too, is it's truly a way, I know a lot of people, and I don't know if you talk about this with your clients, but a lot of people hate marketing, hate it. They, they may not they admit it. it. Yeah, they, they, may, they may not admit it, but they don't like marketing. I mean, what are All your right. thoughts on that? Because I think, you know, a lot of people, if, if you went to them and said, hey, you can only, if you got to only work with clients, you didn't have to do marketing, you didn't have to post on social media, you didn't have to do cold outreach, you didn't have to run ads, and you got to work with clients and still make the money you want to make, would you want to do it? They'd be like, hell yes. You know, they, they, I suppose that's yeah. removing a step. So that's always advantageous. I guess my point of view is I enjoy marketing when I have the money to spend on the advertising. <laughs> if I don't, then I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's yeah, not and, and, I, and I enjoy it too. You know, there's a lot of, but you know, inherently identify as a marketer, right? I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's kind of my, my superpower, but a lot right. of people don't, if they're a financial planner, their superpower is, you know, talking money and investments. If they're a real estate agent, you know, it's the real estate market. So mm-hmm. a lot of people, um, kind of should themselves into doing marketing mm. and it doesn't really pay off and they hate it and connect and profit as a way to flip that switch and create leads, lead sources and create streams of referrals without doing the, a lot of that marketing that they don't necessarily enjoy doing. Gotcha. I see it. I see it. So the connectors that you're talking about, can you elaborate on who that is? Yeah. So there's usually three categories in just about any business. And sometimes there's an overlap, which is the sweet spot, right? So if we picture, you know, a Venn diagram, category one, you have the the connectors who are the thought leaders, okay? So people who maybe they've written a book, maybe they have a podcast, you know, maybe they 
you know, have a column that they write online, you know, and a number of different, but thought leadership, they're creating some sort of content, you know, mm-hmm. you know right? second type of connector is a local connector. Okay. So these are the people who have local meetup groups. Maybe they're a local president of an association or a local chamber of commerce, or, you know, uh, a local, you know, club or organization that, you know, has the key thing has your ideal potential clients. And the third type of connector is a service provider connector. So these are the people your ideal clients are already doing business with. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're already, you know, exchanging uh, money for value with that person. And a lot of the times you'll find that there's connectors who are in all three categories and that's the sweet spot because that's really has the most clout of, you know, you reaching more of the right people. Suddenly, I feel like both you and I are connectors, at, at least some portion of those yes. of that diagram. Yes, um, I, I would say you and I probably, well, I don't do a whole lot locally in Arizona, but okay. you know, def- definitely thought leadership, you know, creating mm-hmm. things. I've been on a, a number of different media outlets and events and workshops and that type of thing. And then service provider, of course, you and I are both in business and we mm-hmm. have different things that we offer. So yeah, absolutely. We're connectors and, you know, it's like a never ending web, you know, because we also probably, I, I know I do, you know, I have customers and clients who can also be connectors, right? Oh, and, absolutely. That's so it, yeah. And it multiplies. And when I say the connect and profit effect, and I really want people to think about the bigger picture here is let's say you go out and you're intentional over the next 90 days or six months, and you have the strategy and you build, let's say you build just one new connector relationship every month, right? And that brings you in you know, to anywhere between two to five meetings with potential clients mm-hmm. yeah, for six months in a row. It's not like those are going away. You maintain the relationship now, you know, six months to a year from now, you've got a ton of lead flow coming from connectors and it's like streams going into a larger ocean. And that's, mm-hmm. that's what the connect and profit effect really is. That's really the big picture. Nice. So it sounds like, and you can tell me if I'm wrong here. It sounds like this is more of a B2B thing versus a B2C thing. Is that correct? Primarily, it's more of a, you know, it's more of a psychographic thing in the sense that if people have hard to reach decision makers or affluent clients that they're looking for, it can definitely apply to um, the B2C realms. For example, someone's a luxury realtor, right? So there's connectors who, you know, service that luxury market, whether it's different interior designers or yacht clubs or you know, country clubs, you know, just, just to name a few. So it can apply, but the actual connectors, yeah, you know, building those relationships mm-hmm. is a B2B type of thing, right? Because they're, most of the time, they're going to be in business also. They're not, unless at the local level that can change, there's nonprofits, but sure. definitely, you know, majority, I would say B2B. All right. And I imagine there must be a, a minimum ticket or value as far as whatever it is they're trying to sell, right? It's not hot dogs or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, would, I, I, I would say so. I mean, if, if you want to sell hot dogs, I mean, I, hey, maybe you've got, you've got a hot dog that's like the <laughs> premium hot dog. But um, yeah, most of the people that work with us have a higher transaction size or better yet, you know, a monthly recurring type of thing. Mm-hmm. And it can, you know, so most people who work with us are either financial planners, attorneys, you know, we've got B2B, like IT services, for example, software, that mm-hmm. type of thing, management consulting, coaching. So yeah, you know, in the high ticket is a term that gets thrown around a lot. Uh, I call it more A-list clients, right? So A-list okay. type of, you know, where each client has a significant value or significant dollar amount um, right. associated there. Yeah, I just consider, so with my call answering service, we, we do a great job from com- customer service point of view, but there's some industries where the, you could argue that they could use our service but the, the value of what we provide yeah. them just doesn't justify it because it's a, it's a $50 ticket and they paid us, you know, let's just say they paid us two, three, maybe $5 if we're getting a lot of information from them. If we're paying a substantial or they're paying us six to 10% of the value of that ticket, that's probably not practical. It probably means they got to change their business model for the most part. I guess that's why I say selling hot dogs. You know, I'm selling this dollar fifty hot dog. It only cost me seven dollars to market it. Yeah, it, it's tough. You know, it's easier to sell expensive things. I mean, it's just the, the, right. the math is Yeah, you just favorite. you have some yeah. bandwidth there to actually spend to to acquire the customer. Exactly. Right. That's fair. That's fair. 
So how do people find you then? I'm available online. I mean, I think I'm the only Yakov Smart who's out there. Um, Connectprofit.co. <laughs> I'm available on LinkedIn. So really easy, easy to find online. Right. But I imagine you're using the same thing. I imagine that's what oh, we're talking about. Oh, how I'm marketing my... Okay. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> well, both ways. Both ways. We're all good, right? People got to find you too, but... <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So mostly, you know, we, I mean, this is an example of connect and profit. You and I are chatting, we're getting to know mm-hmm. each other, we're creating some content, mm-hmm. um, but it's a, the start of a relationship. And so we very intentionally, you know, use these connector relationships where it, everyone's getting value mm-hmm. and that drives people into, you know, some of the various marketing that I have out there. So right. yeah, in, in the previous niche with some of the, the, the LinkedIn stuff, I'll give you a kind of a fascinating example and a little bit of a background story too. Sure. So yeah, please. Um, right before COVID hit, um, well, I was doing a lot of different in-person events and we were using Connect and Profit to fill those events. And at those events, you know, we made an invitation for people to enroll and kind of take that next step. So COVID hit and, you know, live events kind of went away and I was, I was not a happy camper because that's where <laughs> most of my cool. revenue was coming from. And, you know, I had my eggs in that basket. So fortunately, um, I connected with a connector in a very specific sub niche of real estate investing. And there's, you know, there was a sub niche within there and he and I partnered, you know, we did a webinar, I was on his podcast and that led to, you know, me being exposed to this whole new niche of people. Mm-hmm. And we created a new offer for these folks. And, you know, I had all the leads I could handle very, very quickly through that one connector relationship. And then that snowballed, I had other connectors reach out. Oh, you did this thing. But this person would love to share this with my audience too. Let's do a deal, right? Wow. So, you know, it, it really starts to snowball. A lot of people don't realize it, but if you set yourself up for success, um, it does start to snowball there. And yeah, it's, you know, my favorite way of getting clients and leads is connect and profit because they come in largely pre-sold. You know, if you do it right there, you know, they're already educated. You're not just some, some guy promising, you know, cause how many people say, Oh, I can help you grow your business or get more clients. Oh my gosh. We probably get hundred million people. I'm sure you're getting pitched every day. I know oh, yeah. I am. Right. So it's yeah. like differentiation. Yeah. We can have great messaging and that goes a long way. But when you combine it with someone else saying, Hey, you know, this guy is actually legit. Check this out. You know, that that's when people actually take action and you overcome so much of that sales resistance or some of those objections. It just, it makes life so much easier because, you know, like you, I enjoy marketing and that's not to say I don't run advertising or I don't enjoy, you know, advertising online and doing some of these other things, but I look at that as a supplement to connect and profit. I look Mm -hmm. at that as something that supplements the connect relationships rather than my bread and butter for lead gen, because as you probably know, those leads tend to be lower quality, more skeptical, a lot less right. sticky. And, and so the connect and profit effect is a different kind of a, a different approach to it that I think a lot of people resonate with. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Advertising leads certainly need more nurturing. They need more time. I don't even know if, I'm not sure if convincing is the right word, but a lot of times there's a, there's an arm length, arm's length relationship, both mm-hmm. with us. Cause we're like, who are you? We got to make sure that you fit our model as a client Mm -hmm. and they got to make sure that we fit their model as their business. And it's just, there's a little dance and it takes some time. And from that, I limited the number of meetings that I have with people to two meetings. Like if I haven't convinced you, or if I haven't showed you what you want to see in two meetings, presuming that you looked at our website and whatever, did your homework on me and our crew, there's nothing more that I'm going to say that's going to, gonna exactly. I guess make you to to take the leap either either you take the leap or just find someone else so yeah. and I think you run into clients or potential clients that enjoy being chased just maybe have no intention of actually buying they just need a friend and I I just despise that you know I just don't you know we have a very selective process for that reason right because mm-hmm. you know a lot of people are just like oh book more calls you talk to more people you'll sell more stuff right it's a numbers game I, I I hate getting on the phone and you know the convincing vibe it's it's not it's bad positioning especially if you're charging a premium to work with you it's terrible positioning having to convince someone that's what marketing is for that's what you know the the lead up to the appointment is for not you know 
during the appointment, you know, I think I'm a lot better at marketing than, than selling. And I mm -hmm. take great pride in that because, you know, the days of hard selling and, you know, doing the, and those gimmicky things and all those like hundred million closes and stuff like that, that, you know, some people have written about, I think that's, that's kind of gone away and it's been replaced by, you know, building trust. But I agree with you. I mean, the convincing piece, if you want to grow and scale a business, I think there's no room for that. Yeah, some people may have doubts and specific objections and sure. you know, it's great to communicate past that. But if they're, you know, not coming on the appointment already pre-sold, already at least somewhat educated and sold on you or, you know, what's in it for them, then you're going to waste your time and their time. Mm hmm. Yeah, I remember being in a meeting with a guy, had reached out to us. So I thought, oh, this is easy layup. He knows what we do. Right. He's an appliance repair guy, something like that. And I'm like, you have this problem, right? We figured out what his issue was. We have the solution. It was peanut butter and chocolate all the way. <laughs> and he's still like, eh, let's set up another meeting. <laughs> I was like, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> I was trying not to be mean, but I was like, we already spent two hours talking here. And it's oh. not like we're building a rocket ship or anything. It's, it's answering phone calls, but it still is one yeah. of those just challenges. I think he was just bored. I don't know. Maybe, you know, I think some people, it, it's a confidence thing, right? Because, you know, the buyer's remorse piece. And sometimes it's mm -hmm. not that people aren't confident in you or in us. It's they're True. Not confident in themselves. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah. So, yeah very and, true. And, and that person's deselecting too. You know, if he's going to be upfront, he needs two, three hour conversations and he still, you know, isn't decisive. If he does get some guidance or he does get your services, probably not going to go too well with him. No, that's the thing. That's totally true. Because when you end up selling someone that's like that, that's kind of him and hawing. Yeah, and they, him and Haw the entire relationship. <laughs> exactly, man. And it's I've just every that. time you send an invoice, they're like, "Did you have to send it on white paper?" And it's just, or whatever. They just, um, they just get stuck. They get in their own way for growth, and it's it's frustrating. It's frustrating for me. Yeah. It's frustrating for my employees, and it's got to be frustrating for them. So like, yeah, I think there's good no room for that. You know, if you want to grow a business or do what you love or, you know, be in your, be in your zone of genius, there's no room for, you know, I'm not going to tell, say what the acronym means. I think people can figure it out, but PETA, you yeah. know, being in the, you know what, there, there's no room for that. They got to go. Right. Yeah. My last, my last business, we had a PETA tax. Cause that was not a monthly residual. <laughs> so there were some clients you could throw a little nut on to try to help them either. It was a little extra cash. You could throw the employees for dealing with it or you just price them out of being a client. That's smart. I like that. So yeah, we have a, we have a tougher time doing that with um, calls on call. Cause our numbers are right on the, on the website and it's month to month, whatever, but hmm. Every once in a while, you come up with a client, you're like, oh, I wish we could <laughs> throw that on there. What is this PETA tax? <laughs> That's awesome. But anyways, every business owner has been through there, so it's true. Totally true. Yeah. Can you give us, um, I guess, the 40,000-foot view of Connect and Profit? Like, how are, you, how are you reaching out to these connectors? What are you, I don't know if offering them is the correct way to say it, but I guess there is a little bit of what's in it for them. No, yeah, well, it's that's a big thing, right? Because if yeah. you I think a lot of people, what they do, what I've seen uh, being on the receiving side, and you know, other people I know have been on the receiving side, is they get, let's say, a direct message or an email from someone that says, "Hey, you know, you want to promote my stuff and make a bunch of money." I mean, that's essentially <laughs> how people, right. especially like a lot of internet marketers, coaches, consultants, that that's where that's how creative they get, and it, mm -hmm. it's done because it's no value. They don't know you from Tom. They don't trust you. And to a lot of connectors, reputation is more important than making a quick buck. And a lot of people. Oh yeah. A thousand times over. That. Yeah. And if it's yeah. not, then they're not really going to be a great connector for you. I think it's, right. it's one of those litmus tests, right? So there's a feeling out process, but you know, it's all about how quickly can you articulate that you know something about them, that it's not just like a templated message that you know it could be going on to anyone how quickly can you convey that right mm -hmm. and can you convey in the initial outreach in the initial email something that hooks their attention very quickly why it's worth 
paying attention to, or at least learning more about. You're not asking them to make a decision. You're not asking for a commitment right up front, but it's like just a next step that, you know, is it something to worth exploring, right? And it's, right. it's a totally detached way to do it, but that needs to be communicated right out of the gate. And also here's the thing that other pe- you know, people sometimes don't realize, make it easy for the other person to say yes, or to connect you to people or to- Oh, totally. Yourself. Because some people will want that and then they'll say, great, now you go and write the emails. Can you create a landing? Like, no, you know, it needs to be turnkey. Like Mm -hmm. you don't want them taking up bandwidth. They don't want to take up bandwidth. And it's just, you know, that's a red flag. If someone's not thinking like that, it just shows that they don't value your time or your energy or certainly, you know, the the, what you've built. So, you know, those are some things to consider. I'm not, if that, is that answering your, cause I mean, we could go in a, a bunch of different directions here. Oh yeah. 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 That's a good start. I guess. Um, yeah. Initially how to connect to the connector. So you answered that. That's super cool. Where are you finding them? Cause I imagine yeah. LinkedIn is probably a solid place to start, but are there other channels? So it depends on the business, right? And it depends on who the end customer and client is, right? So LinkedIn is one place to do it. Facebook is actually another place to do it, especially oh. like face. there's people who have Facebook groups, for example, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, if we, let's, let's say moms are your ideal client, I'll give, just give you a kind of an obscure sure. B2C example. So there's a bunch of Facebook groups for moms bunch of Facebook groups. There's, I mean, I think there's some LinkedIn groups for moms or parenting, but Mm -hmm. you know, so people who run those groups, they have communities, they have, they have your people. We say OPP, other people's people. Who's got (laughs) people? They've got your people, you know? So Facebook, LinkedIn, Amazon, great place, you know, because a lot of these, again, moms, what books are out there educating moms, right? So those authors are at least thought leadership connectors. And oftentimes they've built businesses on the backs of those books. YouTube, you know, who's got the YouTube channels, podcasts, great ones, you know, iTunes, specific categories, the more specific, the better, right? And then there's, you know, if you, if you Google certain terms, like, again, if you go and Google best podcasts for moms or best blogs for moms, you're going to find who those connectors are. LinkedIn certainly um, is a turnkey way of finding those people as well. So between you know, those sources that I mentioned, and if you're only doing business locally, there's different local sources, different local associations, and you can find what these associations are if you're going down that route sure. um, through LinkedIn and also through different local searches as well. Or if you know, there's, for example, like the National Speakers Association, right? Um, so those guys, they have chapters throughout the country. So if you were, if your end client is a speaker now, all of a sudden, you know, you've got, let's say, let's say there's a chapter in every state, um, you've got 50 connectors in that one, in that one search. So most people are going to find anywhere from 50 to 500 connectors starting out. That's kind of going to be their sweet spot. Wow. Um, Yeah. in, In most businesses. And the thing, this is something that we work with people on too. Sometimes those possibilities are overwhelming. Okay. Well, there's all these possibilities and that leads to procrastination, right? So it's narrowing it down. Okay. Who are we going to start with? What's the approach going to be? Mm-hmm. Um, and and going reverse engineering and building from there. So a lot of this seems like a somewhat manual process, which is going to take time. Have you automated any of this? Yeah. So the messaging can be automated. The research is the only part that's a little manual. Uh, we show people how to delegate that to a VA or an assistant or even okay. an intern. And there's some ways through LinkedIn too that you can pull some of the, some of that information as well. Right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that part is definitely worth <laughs> delegating for sure. Right. You don't want to be sitting there doing the research, uh, but it's also important to have very specific litmus tests, right? Because if you delegate and you don't have litmus tests and you're, you're not connecting with the right connectors, then it's not going to be nearly as effective. Oh, sure. Because then it's just people. people yeah. And then it's, you know, you're doing a bunch of virtual coffees and, and wasting your time. And yeah, I gotcha. hate those things. Uh, <laughs> Fair. So what would a typical success rate, let's just say to, um, let's call it qualified um, connectors. I want to say leads, (laughs) Mm. connectors that you reached out to. Is it expected that you're getting 30% to respond in some way, shape or form, even if it's saying don't ever reach out to me again, or what's a, what's a decent return on something like that? A response, I should say response percentage. 
So the best question to ask your response percentage, if you're getting super low percentage, something's probably up. There's no like universal, hey, it should always be at this percentage. The better, the better metric to look at is how many actual people are getting to the hook point, right? How many, All right. let's say how many meetings are you getting per week, right? If you really systematize it and you know that you want to hit three to five meetings per week with connectors. For some people that may sound like a lot. So mm -hmm. maybe one or two, For some people you, maybe you have someone on your team who can have some of the meetings. So maybe you want 10 to 15, right? Yeah. Depends on the market, depends on the connectors, but okay. how many of those are you getting per week? Right. And if you listen, if you only reach out to 15 connectors in a week and you book five meetings, I'd rather do that than reach out to 150 and book 10, you know? Oh, totally. We can yeah. be more specific and we're going to be more selective. So mm -hmm. um, that's what I want people to think about. And then ultimately, how many of those turn into, I don't want to say deals, but turn into something, right? Whether sure. that's, you know, you being on their podcast or, you know, them emailing for you or driving traffic to your thing or, you know, having you speak to their group, you know, whatever that turns into, but, you know, if you're having conversations that kind of go like this, well, well, it was so nice to meet you. If I think of someone, I'll definitely pass your name along. Well, mm. probably not going to hear from that person again, right? No. So how many are actually going to next steps? And what a lot of people don't quite realize is most people aren't um, aren't intentional about that, right? They don't have something to say, okay, so the way to do that is I've got this webinar and, you know, here's how that works. You know, we give you the emails and this date and, you know, here's what, what's happened in the past. If you just give people like, you know, a turnkey process, they're going to say yes, you know, especially if there's upside for them, you're making them look good. They're getting right. value. Maybe there's a opportunity to, for them to generate some extra revenue or a combination of the above, you know, plus, you know, a lot of these people who have groups or who have followings or audiences, they know that they need to create content. Um, they don't have time to create all the content themselves. So you're doing that, doing them a big favor, um, especially if you've got stuff that's relevant to, to that audience. So mm -hmm. um, those are all, all key things because, you know, what you don't want to do is just have a bunch of conversations that you don't go anywhere. It's just, it's right. kind of demoralizing and you want to flesh that out from the get go. I think a huge thing that you're talking about is making it easy for the person that you're reaching out to, to take the next step. Exactly. That's a huge, 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 huge thing. I was just on, um, I don't know, Facebook earlier this morning. I saw a buddy of mine. He's got an arborist company. He's like, hey, we got some trees. And I was like, oh, we need three trees, right? So I call up the number that he's got on there. And I get this automated message. And I'm like, I don't want to sit through this. Because it's like, you know, if you know your party's extension, oh, like, no. it's a tree place. How many extensions can you possibly have? <laughs> so I just hit zero, like any smart person would. And that brings me back to the beginning of the recording. Oh, no. I'm like, come on. So then I do what any next level, very impatient person would do. And I press zero a bunch of times. Because in the phone <laughs> system world, sometimes that just gets you like, this guy's impatient. Get him a person. The agent says, goodbye. <laughs> like the, the robot. Um, and so I put a little message. I'm like, dude, I want to buy some trees. Your little robot hung up on me. And I told him exactly what happened. He's mm -hmm. like, no worries. I'll call you. But it's kind of funny. Like, you spent the money on this ad or took the time to post this thing. And the next step that you're giving them is a phone number. Just as easily if it was an email or website address, or whatever. The next step, you, you know what you're trying to point people to do. And yet when they do that, they run into a brick wall. Hmm. So I see that all the time with businesses. So I love that you're pointing out that you got to make it easy. To you got to test it too. You got to make sure the links work because if the, the links don't work or the, <laughs> the phone number is tricky, like the easiest thing to do, you know, path of least resistance, but like, oh, that's hard. I'm just not going to do it. Right. You know, especially online, right? Because there's yeah. some, so many distractions and things someone could be looking at. Totally. So I want to talk about how you get your clients to remove some of those barriers because I would bet that you and I are in a similar crowd as far as looking for B2B stuff yeah. or B2B clients. And some of them don't even know that they have stuff that's blocking progress. Yeah. So how do you work with small businesses or owners, entrepreneurs, telling them, hey, without saying, hey, moron, you're saying more gentle, I guess, right. <laughs> letting them know, like, maybe we should try this. Well, I think it starts with giving them the right 
frame of reference, right? And what I mean by that is just the right, some of the, a couple of the things that we've talked about today and ways to think about things that they may not have thought of. So shifting perspective, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, like we talked about earlier, if, you know, if I have to convince someone that it's for them and really convince them and drag them across the finish line to enroll, oh. well, guess what's going to happen? They're not going to either implement effectively or they're going to find a way to self-sabotage. So we want to kind of nip that in the butt. Um, so it's giving them a different perspective, giving them a way of looking at it and then just, you know, making sure that they're looking at the metrics, right? You know, numbers don't lie. It's understanding that you know, things are, this is a scientific, you know, we're not um, creating something here that, you know, it's designed to get likes or comments. It's, you know, how many meetings are you getting? Are these turning into new opportunities? Is the systematic, right? And it's a matter of tweaking from there, right? You mm -hmm. know, and it's, and it's also not getting, I think sometimes with marketing and business, it's easy to get emotional and say, oh, this, I, I was, uh, th this doesn't work, right? It's, it's easy to um, say, say that. And so, instead of thinking it in those binary terms, instead of thinking, okay, so this part is working, here's the missing step, what can I do to tweak these? And there's mm -hmm. you know, a number of tools in the toolkit for um, fixing something or getting something better optimized. So mm -hmm. I think what happens is anytime people start a process like the connect and profit process, and I saw this on the LinkedIn side as well over the years, yeah. is there's a bit of a transformation that happens, right? Almost energetically where they're doing something different. And, you know, sometimes there's internal resistance and technology breaks or something weird happens. It just, sure. you know, it just, it just happens. But once people get past that, that initial kind of hurdle, you know, their, their perspectives transform. They're also getting different results. And now, you know, they've got a new way or a different way of growing their businesses or making an impact or putting themselves yeah. out there. Right. So, you know, it's the psychology of it is, is kind of fascinating too, because, you know, there's different things, there's different insecurities that people have, or there's different fears or anything, you know, around marketing or getting more clients is fear of rejection. What if, you know, right. I come off like a complete doofus, right. Or, <laughs> you know, what if, what if no one wants to buy or, you know, what if I get crickets and, you know, it's, getting them to buy into a process mm -hmm. and then take action and know that the worst thing that happens is you just get data. And from that data, you can make the necessary adjustments and the, the end goal is worth it. The result is worth it. I love it. Cause then you're still getting results, right? Mm -hmm. My rule is you either succeed or you learn. Exactly. So yep. you're not right getting nothing out of it. You're getting a ton of stuff out of it. You just have to be smart enough to pull it out. So that's very cool. Exactly. Tell me, I guess, what has been your typical response on the negative side from some of the connectors, do people get mad or anything like that? Or <laughs> So, I mean, I'll share a couple of things. Sometimes people are very attached to a way of doing things mm -hmm. or a way oh, yeah. of, you know, for example, like our web, one of our webinars was titled how to get high paying clients without posting content, sending annoying messages or running ads, for example. Right. right. And like, for and I, you know, I have my assistant who sends a lot of the messages and, you know, I, I don't really look at a lot of the negative replies, but I remember this one dude emailed and he's like, oh, by the way, content works really well. And, you know, how dare you say that posting content is a terrible idea? Who do you, hey, so people get defensive or they're wrapped up in, you know, doing things a certain way. And sure. you know, I'm not, I know all of it can work. I'm just big on saying, listen, you know, as a business owner, you probably don't want to be doing all those marketing things. Here's a way to streamline that and leverage other pre-existing relationships and you right. at least add that to the mix <laughs> not have that as your foundation so i mean yes and sometimes people will not be interested or sometimes people will um you know ask weird questions or you know sometimes and you know so my assistant you know every once in a while she just gets hit on by like you know people on linkedin or email oh yeah oh, you know, I'm not interested in, in this, but you know, Hey, my friend thought you, you know, whatever, which is you know, totally inappropriate. They do that on LinkedIn. They do do that on LinkedIn. Sometimes uh -huh. they do that through email too. I mean, it's just like, you know, sometimes men have, have issues in, in, in that category. Right. So, um, you know, by and all, I don't really pay attention to that. I don't think it's, it's a bit, it's a big deal. And, you know, I encourage other people because there's also, you know, anytime we talk about something that's 
designed to propel growth or expansion. Some people just don't really have that honest ambition, right? There's oh, totally. People, especially yeah. entrepreneurs who want to be doing the same thing every day. They're very content and they don't really want to learn or grow. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, they're, they're, they're satisfied or they've got some block and, you know, it's not, I don't see that as my responsibility to get past that block because, you know, even with connectors, there's hundreds or even thousands of people could be good connectors. And you and I both know there's tens of thousands, if not more entrepreneurs who are growth minded, who mm -hmm. you know, could experience that transformation. So it's just, you know, thinking about that, looking at it that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because when I first started my business back in 2006, I was pushing hard for growth and I assumed that everybody that started yeah. their own business funny. was just like the only reason to, to start it is to grow it. And I was so wrong. Cause you'd meet with people like business owners and stuff like that. And you're like, Oh, I'm doing X, Y, Z. What are you doing? And they're like, nothing. Why are you working so hard? And I'm like, why wouldn't you just be an employee if you want the easy way out? It's surprising. I mean, yeah, I remember when I started out too, I would go to all these networking events and I was green, man. I was just like, just getting started. And I, you know, assumed these people really had their act together. They were making all this money. And then, you know, very quickly, I realized how few people could articulate what they do in 60 seconds right. or less when they have a simple business. They're a pest controller and they can't articulate that in 60 seconds or less. It's like... Something, something is off. So very quickly, you know, one of the things I learned from a mentor was, you know, you take a look at what everyone else in your industry is doing. And if you do the exact opposite, you'll usually be very, very successful. Oh, and interesting. That, that holds true in a lot of cases. All right. All right. Do you mind just for the listeners, if I throw out a couple scenarios to you about how you would use Connect and Profit go for it. or yeah. an industry? Uh, go for it. Um, let's try commercial contractor. So someone that puts up buildings for offices or warehouses or something like that. So who's there? And I don't know that industry too well, but we, it'll still work. Who's their end client? Like, you know, who's going to hire these people? end client would either in this case, just to keep it easy. Let's say it's a business owner that has a multi-million dollar business. Let's say they got a, I don't, they got a accounting firm that's got 500 employees and they want to put them up let's assume people are going back to work in offices <laughs> and they're going to build an office building in the, like, I don't know, 20 years from now, whatever. Yeah. So a commercial contractor, like a general contractor, that yeah. type of person, right? Mm -hmm. so, this, so there's so many different angles. One angle can be commercial real estate brokers, right? Mm -hmm. Who, you know, work with these business owners already. Another angle could be an association for accounting firms, right? Where they can access that business owner, a local, you know, maybe an EO chapter, for example, entrepreneurs organization or other kind mm -hmm. of organizations where that person's a member, right? For local entrepreneurs. Um, there's also, you know, with commercial buildings, I know there's different things with development, right? So there's other, and this is the, probably the most granular one and the, the lowest hanging fruit is there's other kind of service providers, right? So the contractor, you know, if he's a GC, there's other subcontractors and some mm -hmm. of them have a, a book of business or other, you know, business owners they know as well. So yeah. those are a few scenarios. You also, you know, if you, we look at if their ideal client is, let's say in accounting, business professional services, you know, there's attorneys, there's different, you know, other people they know in, in their circles who the commercial contractor. And I guarantee you, if you're a commercial contractor, most commercial contractors aren't going to be that strategic about this. So just by implementing something mm -hmm. um, and setting yourself apart and having kind of the right positioning, um, yeah. it's, it, you can very quickly start to differentiate yourself and get results this way. Nice. I like that. How about, I'm going to throw one more at you just for fun Go here. For How about a marketing company that is aiming for larger, uh, larger clients? So say yeah. the, yeah. let's say fortune 500 clients. Fortune 500. So we have to look at, I would go service provider influencers, right? Okay. So who is, you know, who's already doing business with these people? Maybe it's a software company, right? This enterprise level, maybe uh -huh. it's, you know, it, but if they're doing, let's say they're, they're doing Google ads, maybe there's graphic design firms, right? Just, you know, for an example, yeah. mm -hmm. um, maybe there's payroll companies, right? So like there's a few big payroll companies out there that have reps or territory managers who could be good connectors, right? So All right. Th those are a few places to go. And then the other thing, if you, if you can think of a few different industries, there's industry events, right? Or trade mm -hmm. magazines and the people running those, 
um, great opportunity to put yourself in front of those people. So yeah, yeah. It, you know, it kind of continues to there's different sure. branches and, you know, I love all the possibility. That's cool. The, the scenarios are really cool too, because we can take pretty much any business yeah. and start thinking about this, start getting the wheels turning. Yeah. So let's go down the road of the marketing. Cause that's kind of fun. Let's just say yeah. you reach out to a sales rep at some big payroll company that takes care of the right. payroll, been taking care of payroll for XYZ company for 22 years or something like that. And the rep's been in there elbows deep for a long time. How do you move from the connect portion to the profit portion? <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's having an initial meeting and you're asking them questions, finding out how you can give value to that person. Maybe it's marketing them. Maybe it's, you know, you have an introduction or a connection for them. And then you probably know it's, you know, you want to know your customer. You probably know that there's a set of challenges that that potential customer is experiencing or a set of things mm -hmm. they're probably thinking about, right? And that comes down to doing a little market research, using a little bit of empathy and asking that person, let's say at the payroll company, hey, has this person ever mentioned this? Or, you know, can I run a couple ideas by it? Because I think they're, you know, experiencing these issues, right? And usually that person will be like, yeah, you know, that could be, it makes sense. Or I've heard them complain about this or, you know, whatever the case may be. And then, you know, to once you've got that rapport, once you see if there's a potential need, yeah, you know, if they've got a really tight relationship, you could say, hey, you know, could you give us a, a direct introduction? You know, I'll write the email for you. Yeah. Um, we'll be open to sharing it and, you know, seeing if that person's willing to engage and want to find out more. That's one way to do it. Another way that, you know, I'm in favor of because it's a little more scalable is to put together a little resource. It could be a cheat sheet, a checklist you know, some, something like that. I, you know, you could do a video and get fancy, but just for our example here, it could be a little blog. Mm -hmm. And if you know what's going to be relevant to that person, three ways what X can get Y, right? All right. You, you know, this, and then, Hey, you know, I'm going to print this out. If you're in their office, could you share it and, and say, you know, Hey, this is a, a resource and it builds their relationship with that decision maker <laughs> too, because they're right. giving value Plus, you know, that resource has your contact information. And now you've eliminated, you know, having to go through that person because then, you know, you can send that decision maker a message on LinkedIn or an email and say, hey, so-and-so has been telling me great things about you. You know, you may have recently seen something he shared, by the way, and then you ask a question and see if they nice. want a meeting. So, I mean, that, that's one, those are a couple of different ways to do it. All right. I like that. That's cool. Man, you got, we're almost out of time here. How can people find you one more time? Connectandprofit.co. They can also find me on LinkedIn, Yakov Smart. Yakov Smart, easy enough. Well, that is super cool, man. You got a cool thing going on here. I love that it's systematized. I love that you're helping convince business owners to make it as easy as possible to spend money with them. And I love that you're essentially making the, the business transactions just as natural, as fluid, as friendly, and easy as possible. That's super cool. Exactly. And I appreciate that. Thank you so much for having me. This has been great. You've got a really cool show here. That's, you know, I like it and it's starting to grow. So that's always good. But I guess it all comes down to the quality of the guests. So people like you make it happen. Hey, appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been Authentic Business Adventures, the business program that brings you the struggle stories and the triumph and successes of business owners across the land. We are underwritten locally by the Bank of Sun Prairie. If you're listening to this on the web, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, and of course, share with your entrepreneurial friends. My name is James Kademan, entrepreneur, author, speaker, and helpful coach to small business owners across the country. And what do we got here? Authentic Business Adventures is brought to you by Calls on Call offering call answering and reception of services for service businesses across the country on the web at callsoncall.com, as well as draw in customers business coaching, offering business coaching services for entrepreneurs looking for growth on the web at drawincustomers.com. And of course, the Bold Business Book, a book for the entrepreneur in all of us, available wherever fine books are sold. We'd like to thank you, our wonderful listeners, as well as our guest, Yakov Smart, the founder of the Connect and Profit Method. Because I got to thank you, man, because you essentially gave us the system, but it seems like it makes <laughs> sense for people to reach out to you to get more. Can you tell us the website to reach you one more time? Yeah, connectandprofit.co. 
connect and profit. And the word and, of course, is spelled out. Yep. Awesome. Exactly. Past episodes can be found morning, noon, and night. The podcast link found at drawincustomers.com. Thank you for listening. We will see you next week. I want you to stay awesome. And if you do nothing else, you know what to do. Enjoy your business. Thank you.